Until then. Judge Moore, I really do appreciate you making the time to meet with me. Kevin Houghton in the PD's office, he said that you might be able to provide some insight. How can I help? I'm trying to find out about Baltimore officers whose names keep coming up repeatedly in complaints, either excessive force or civil rights violations. And he threw a name at me. Daniel Herschel. Herschel's not the only one, but Kevin and I have talked about him before. So. He seems to be a multiple offender. You could say so. About 50 complaints against him. That's pretty multiple. Why is he still on the street? Mm, simply put, Herschel and guys like him, they get out of their cars and they make arrests. And that's more than you can say about too many police in this city who are collecting a paycheck. And it's become a bigger problem since the Freddie Gray indictment. The work slowdown. Exactly. So strangely enough, Herschel has become an asset these days, despite his many faults. In fact, I've had to throw out several of his arrests on cases in my court. And he's come damn close to perjuring himself on Fourth Amendment stuff time and again. Of course, that's not unique to him. You should get a copy of the list. The list? Yes, there is a list of about 24 Baltimore police officers who can no longer testify in court because they have been exposed for on-the-stand perjury. That many? And more being added all the time. And Herschel's on this list. Not yet, but he should be. My client was assaulted, tied up, and robbed by Officer Franks in her home. Detective, I can't speak to the mental state of this officer. But what I do know is that he is a criminal. And he needs to be locked up as soon as possible. Well, maybe I should go to the press since you're having such a hard time swallowing this. Has this officer even been questioned? We run investigations every day. Well, I would suggest you have this officer verify his whereabouts during the time that my client was assaulted. You do that. Rich, dude, I'm so glad you came. You want to go out and get a little coffee? No, let's just get this over with now. Get it over with? Yeah. Oh. Paul, we're going to have to cut you off. <sighs> You're my only client, OK? I, I, you know, I can't, just a couple more months. Just give me just a few more months because I'm gonna, I'm coming back. Can't do it, buddy. Can't do it. You're still radioactive in this town. Tell me about it. I just got my check returned from the Correspondence Association. Yeah, well, consider yourself lucky. Usually, money from disreputable sources is given to charity. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, 20 years hard work, trading favors on the hill, and poof, one thing. I do, I do, one, I do one. I do one thing. I know. Okay. I know. One. I understand. Look, Paul. It, it's not my fault. I know it wasn't your fault. But nobody wants to be seen eating lunch next to a loser. Well, take it easy. Nah, he's right. School gets a certain amount of money for each kid that shows up one day in September and one day in October. One day? After that, they don't lose the government money. So we done with it. Nah, nah, man. School is school. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to school you, brother. All right. Which one of y'all still needs your September day? Get it over with now. We won't be messing with y'all later. Right. I'll be the range safety officer. I've had the training. Sergeant Benjamin, you worked a zero range last year, didn't you? Yep. Piece of cake? Good. You're the zero man. I always thought Benjamin was a zero. <laughs> Morales, Brown, Grasso, you're working the line. You know the drill. <laughs>